Let's take a look at a process called dimensional analysis that will allow us to convert between units. So um, dimensional analysis is based on the premise that the units of quantities must be subjected to the same mathematical operations as their associated numbers. And so what that means is that um, you're familiar with doing arithmetic on numbers uh, you multiply numbers together, uh, you divide numbers. So what this statement is suggesting is that we're going to do the same thing to the units. We're going to multiply the units together and we're going to divide the units and so on. Um, and in that fashion we can use this process to convert between units, um, both between units within the metric system and units from the metric system to the imperial system and vice versa. So the first thing that we're going to need in order for um, us to perform a dimensional analysis is uh, to identify an appropriate conversion factor. So a conversion factor uh, consists of two different quantities that are equal to each other. So for example, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So if we had a ruler and we put one inch next to the centimeter side, we would see that one inch is indeed equal to 2.54 centimeters. So those quantities are equal. So what that means is that allows us to create a conversion factor. In fact, it allows us to create two conversion factors. We could either say that we have 2.54 centimeters per inch, and it's just as true to say that in one inch per 2.54 centimeters. So um, depending on our situation and uh, what the problem calls for, um, we could use either of these conversion factors to convert between inches and centimeters. Uh, if, I was con if I was given a value in inches and I wanted to convert to centimeters, I would use this value. And if I was given a value in centimeters and I wanted to convert to inches, then I would use this conversion factor here. So here are some other common conversion factors. So um, we can convert between the imperial system, 1.09 yards, and the metric system, 1 meter. Um, again, 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. Kilometers to miles, miles to meters, um, liters and quarts. So again, um, this is not information that I would expect uh, you guys to, un to, excuse me, that I would expect you guys to memorize. Um, if, you're, if you need this kind of information during an exam, then this is information that I will provide to you on an information sheet or as part of the question itself. Um, I don't expect you to memorize that one meter equals 1.0936 yards. So anytime we're trying to convert from the metric system to the imperial system, um, I will give these kinds of conversion factors to you in uh, an information sheet as part of the exam. So um, as I was saying a moment ago, depending on what the situation is calling for and the number that we're given and what we're trying to convert into, we can use either of those conversion factors from before. We can put 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch or 1 inch over 2.54 centimeters. So let's look at the problem that's given here. Convert 34 inches to centimeters. So in this problem, we're given a value in inches and we're asked to convert to centimeters. So um, I have here 34 inches times my conversion factor, 2.54 centimeters divided by 1 inch equals 86 centimeters. And so here we can see that the inches are crossed out and really what they left out was another cross here. Both of these inches get canceled out. And the reason that that happens is because I can factor out uh, this 1 inch from this, quanti from this quantity here, 2.54 centimeters. And if I do that, if I pull this, if I factor out this 1.4, um, excuse me, this 1 over 1 inch, then I would have a quantity that would be inches over inches. 
and I can pull this out of this problem, then I would have 34 times 2.54 centimeters. And inches over inches is equal to 1. So when I have a, num a unit in the numerator, like this, and I have that same unit down here in the denominator, like this, that's actually equal to unit over unit, which is equal to 1. So they cancel out, or we multiply by 1, which is the same number, so it seems as if they cancel out. So these, um, this unit would disappear, and what I would be left with is just this unit here, because nothing canceled the centimeters. So the inches would get canceled out, centimeters would be left, and then in my answer on this side, I would have 86 centimeters. And to do this math problem, we would multiply 34 times 2.54 divided by whatever the number down here happens to be. In this case, it's 1. So I don't necessarily have to multiply or divide by 1 because I would just be left with the same number. But in general, we will multiply the values on top and we'll divide by the values in the denominator. So the conversion of temperature units is a little bit different. So in a previous video, we talked about these different scales, the Celsius scale versus the Fahrenheit scale versus the Kelvin scale. Um, and what we discovered was that the size of a degree between the Celsius scale and the Fahrenheit scale, the degrees are actually a different size. Um, and the zero points of each of these um, different scales are also set at a different point. So zero degrees Celsius does not equal zero degrees Fahrenheit. They, they represent different temperatures. So uh, when, we're talk when we have to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa, we have to take into account both of these situations, that uh, the zero points are different and the size of the degrees themselves are different. So there's also, of course, a third scale, the Kelvin scale. And in the Kelvin scale, the size of a Kelvin and the size of a degree Celsius are the same, but Kelvin and degree Celsius are a different size than degrees Fahrenheit, and degrees Fahrenheit are, are smaller. They are a smaller increment of measurement. Um, and also, Kelvin scale has a different zero point. So they all, all the scales have different zero points. So zero in each scale represents a different temperature. Um, so we, we have to take these situations into account, these ideas into account when we're trying to convert between different temperature scales. So here is the mathematical equation to convert um, a uh, a temperature in degrees Celsius into a temperature in Fahrenheit. So the 9 fifths ratio there is to take account of the fact that um, a degree Celsius is 9 fifths bigger than a degree Fahrenheit. Celsius degrees are bigger. So that's what this factor right here does. Oops. That's what this factor right here does, is it takes care of the fact that the degrees are not the same size. And over here, we will multiply that by the degrees Celsius and then add 32. And the 32 is to take account of the fact that these scales do not have the same zero point. So uh, if I am starting from a temperature in Celsius and I'm trying to convert that to a temperature in Fahrenheit, I'm going to have to add 32 degrees to account for the difference in zero point there. Um, and similarly, if I'm trying to convert between Kelvin and degrees Celsius, I don't need this factor anymore because a degree Celsius and a Kelvin are the same size. But I do have to account for the fact that they have different zero points. So the, the zero point of Celsius and Kelvin are different by 273.15 degrees. Here's a pictorial representation of the three different temperature scales. So you can see that the distance between um, freezing water and boiling water in each scale uh, represents a different number of degrees. In Celsius and Kelvin, it represents 100 increments, 
and in Fahrenheit it represents 180 increments. So the, the increments themselves are a different size. And we can also see here how they all have different zero points. And in fact, the zero point of the Kelvin scale way down here is zero K. This is called absolute zero. This is the coldest temperature that's possible in the universe. So the Kelvin scale is an absolute scale, um, whereas the Celsius and Fahrenheit scale are relative scales relative to the freezing point of water.